Hi guys, uh, my name is Polly and welcome to Wildwood. We're going to be doing a live stream today all about our bears. It's been a long time since you guys have seen the bears and it's been a long time for, that we've seen the bears as well. Um, so I just want to start off by saying thank you to everyone that has supported us through this pandemic. It has not gone unappreciated and we cannot wait to welcome you back in a few weeks time. And I'll go to that at the end to give you a few more details as to how that's going to look and what you need to know if you're going to come and visit us. Um, so today we've got some pre-recorded footage for you uh, and we've got a bear keeper here to interview to answer some of your questions and I will ask if anyone's got any burning questions please 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 chuck them in the comments below and we will try and answer all of them right at the very end I'll try and answer as many as I can I have a little team here that are going to pass them to me in a very Covid safe manner um, so sit back relax and enjoy some bear time um, we're going to go through everything bears so I'm going to introduce Paul, who is our head keeper here, and he's also uh, the go-to man for anything bear related. Hi Paul, how Hello are you? Hello there. I'm very well. Good. Uh, so the, the first thing is, what is torpor as a broad comp uh, context um, scenario for, for a life cycle of an animal? What is it? It's a reset, I'd say. Okay. A reset that uh, you work up through the year to achieve. So you're, you're eating your way to sleeping through the winter. Cool, so it's basically when animals go to sleep in the winter and they wake up when everything is sort of grown up and they're stuffed to eat. And they have the metabolism to deal with that. Yeah, so we can't do it We can't do it. Although it yeah. would be nice yeah. if we could. We could have slept through the whole of this winter. And it's very similar nice to place. putting blubber on seals. Okay, cool. So, um, and it's very specific, isn't it? Like what? animals need to go into torpor to reach the right conditions what would you say bears for example need to be able to take them through to torpor and how do we help them achieve that in yeah. our in our captive state we have to provide them with the correct diet the, they need to be at a correct weight or a healthy weight before they will consider going into torpor if they're not of that weight they won't go into torpor so um, we manufacture that weight gain and the rhythm throughout the season to, so we can get to a point where they will consider going into torpor. Okay, so how do you know, once they've gone through the summer say, how do you know that they're probably going to go through torpor and then what do you do if they're showing them signs? Are there any signs? There is, there is a, a situation that we would class as logie which is uh, basically a lot on no one's home, very sleepy um, and not very active. Right. So they'll, they'll fall into that if the correct, if the weight is correct, they'll fall into logie before they then will finally fall to sleep. And when they do go in and, and are not very active, we will then act on that by not feeding them when they're asleep and not disturbing them. Then you start your torpor for as long as they stay down right. and the temperatures are right and the climate's correct and the lighting is correct they will stay down as long as they feel they need to so it's not just it's not just how much food you give them for example that will make them go into torpor there's loads of different loads of different things there's there's the amount of daylight hours there's the temperatures snowfall will all, all indicate when they want to go into torpor and will that indicate or help the, the other side when they come out of torpor as well are yeah. they all the same things or get you'll get obviously you get longer longer hours you're going to start getting hungry because you haven't eaten for up to four months right that's a long time it's, isn't it four months it's a long time but your metabolism changes so obviously you don't get any fecal matter through torpor because there's nothing going in so nothing's coming right out. fair enough uh, <laughs> so you can then you can when they do start nibbling around we've always given them grass because that's the first thing they'll go to when right when they come out of torpor in a logy kind of fashion in a very lazy kind of fashion <laughs> uh, then that will start stimulate then stimulating their their digestive systems and so on and, and that will build up so we give very very light feed at the beginning when they first come out right so they don't get a lot when they first start waking up so yeah. and around this time they wouldn't have a lot they're still losing weight so we've probably got another two months from this point to the end of may of them losing weight because they'll be eating low low valerie low valerie low calorie feeds yep. but expending a lot of energy finding. Right, okay. So how does that compare the other side then when they're 
when they're ready to go into torpor, what what are they eating then, and what sort of volume they're, is they're it? They're eating high value foods, right? Uh, and not having to do much about it. I.e., if you put a fish in next to the pond, all it's got to do is pick the fish up, eat it, and he's got a massive hit of fats and all the goodness to put weight on. Uh, and then, uh, as that weight goes on, he'll get to a point where he, he can't be bothered with it. <laughs> just wants to go to sleep because he's reached that. He's that, reached, that, reached that point. Amazing. So it's a, diet does play a huge role, and it's a, a whole year's worth of yeah, a whole year's worth of diet and activity, isn't it? Really, that yeah. leads to that point. You should at the end of, end of May, beginning of June, they should go into a hyperphagia, which is. If it's in front of me, I'll eat it. Oh right, so that's called hyperphagia. Hyperphagia. Eating so everything in sight. Eating everything in sight. Which you could, you could, if you were to control, if, if we do control the diets, you could put too much in there and they would go to, to, to torpor early. Right, so okay. So you have to stretch it out a bit so that it, you're replicating the natural yeah. rhythm. And that's the aim of wild food, isn't it? Is yeah. to replicate what situations the animals would have in the wild. And as keeping them on natural natural as possible food. So, perfect. You know, if we've got birds nesting, we'll be feeding eggs. If we've got insects in the woodwork, we'll be feeding them insects. And that's all feedback to simulate the system. Yeah, it all follow back, so it follows the whole system through. Oh, amazing. It's quite a complicated science, really, isn't it? It's yeah, not just yeah. to feed your bears until they stop eating. Some, some <laughs> good to get the <laughs> And experiment it all the time to see what we can, what we can't. Plants, I've just been working on what plants uh, foliage plants we can put in there that are annual plants that they would benefit from so if, it, if it's growing naturally out in their enclosure they can go and find it yep. as opposed to us giving it. So they do supplement their own feed yeah, so as well? it stimulates their natural behaviours in there poking about and finding what they can eat. Wow so um, our regular visitors will know that our bears that are resident here at Wildwood are called Scruff and Fluff and um, oh that's weird you normally say yeah. Fluff and Scruff I said it the wrong it's like Anton Depp yeah. you say it the wrong way around um, so Fluff and Scruff, were, they've got quite a history, haven't they? Yeah. Um, so they were rescued from a canned hunting scenario, um, how many years ago? Oh, when did they 2014, come in? I believe. They came. So 2014 is when they come to Wildwood. Um, so quickly talk about their history and, and their history specifically with Torpa. Had they done it before? When did you feel like it was the time to do it? Why did you feel like it was the time to do it and how it's affected them? The story is that when the bears came in, 5th of November. Right, so winter. <laughs> uh, when they should have been at a decent weight. Right. Uh, they were uh, not, they were as skinny as you like, and we were very concerned that they would make it through the winter at that weight. So our natural instincts, barring a few, um, I want to say, hurdles, um, Wish to put weight on them as soon as we possibly yeah, can. Yeah, if you've got an emaciated animal, you want the, to feed the them. The problem right? with that was that the digestive system of bears coming in was limited to one food source. Oh, that's so, not a bear, is so, it? <laughs> so they had they had like a maize meal cake. That's what they were fed on when they were in this canned hunting facility. Fortunately, some of the um, villagers in the in the village had been giving them a few apples and every right. fruits and vegetables they had. But that doesn't, if you give something an, an apple straight away, it has got the enzymes in its guts to break down the yeah. apple, get the benefits from the apple. I so, suppose if they're not having them regularly. So as if well, they're not they having them regularly. Yeah. So every new feed that we had to go in was going to upset the bear, but we needed to put the weight on quickly. Yeah. So we were constantly fighting with introducing new foods to get the weight on. Um, that's a different story. You could make a a novel out of just changing the feeds on that apart from the mental problems that we had with them also yeah um, that's another story as well the crunch of the matter was that we managed to do this I believe there was probably 2016 probably six months of the year their bellies weren't right neither of them. so that was them adjusting to what right. we were feeding so they weren't used to a natural diet yeah. or a nutritious diet at you all you imagine you've been kept in a box for 15 years yeah. fed on one thing that's so quite low nutrition yeah, as well, low like nutrition, calories. Yeah. yeah. so um, we got to that point where we had weight on the bears but by that time it was spring so we were wrong when they came in wrong way round we yeah. <laughs> when we got to spring and they were weighty enough we 
we then continued to keep that weight on them through that next year until such time as we round it up a little bit further and then they would go into torpor because right. they were indicating all these signs and we basically went up there one morning and said you know what if we don't disturb them in the morning they won't get up so they were so you were finding them in their bedrooms yeah every morning every morning low activity levels low activity levels and if we went in there they'd get up expecting food so we said you know what we'll keep part and not go in they don't get up and that's when we had the idea of oh no if they're not going to get up what's the point in feeding them yeah so so on and so on and so on and we got to a point now where we've changed that around slightly for the better for possibly for a captive bear a captive bear situation as opposed to a wild bear situation yeah. because it's come a reflection from us to them so because we are up during the daylight hours i believe they are up during the daylight hours because yeah. it's most beneficial to them yeah so their clock has changed and their habits have changed to follow what we do although we're following what they do so we'll <laughs> It's a nice little feedback, yeah. it's a little partnership. <laughs> we always say, all the bear team are here, yeah. luckily two of them are bears. Um, so yeah, it's very much listening to what the animals are, yeah. are telling you behaviour-wise, isn't it? To know what they what? need and what they Classic want. Classic this morning, wasn't it? Yeah. Call them in, they couldn't be bothered, so we didn't feed them. Yeah, <laughs> and I suppose it goes against yeah. everything, everything as a zookeeper, to not feed your animals yeah. on that morning, but ultimately... Especially with them fed them for four months. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but ultimately though, fluff and scruff really benefit, benefited yep. from the torpor haven't they what are, what are the ways that you've seen that it's really benefited them going through that torpor for the first time in what 15 yeah, years there, we was, think? there was an awful lot of coughing when they first came in a lot of coughing a lot of conjunctivitis we haven't had any of that since we have had teeth problems as you know for i've had a major operation last year mm. uh which we should mention is the reason why he looks like a patchwork quilt at the moment he's had, <laughs> you'll see it in the footage he had, he had um ultrasound uh, he basically had a hundred thousand mile service didn't he so yeah we've had an Full ultra, MIT. <laughs> uh, ultrasound on his on his kidneys on his on his lungs and, and anywhere they could find so that's why he's a bit shorn in places <laughs> uh but that'll melt out in, in uh, around july august time uh, he'll get his new coat his winter coat um yeah just general health benefits i i would think mentally and physically there's, there's well we have another problem there's this it's amazing isn't it for having such a i think the teeth problem was probably inherited so yeah you've got bar biting when they were back home it, it, it was back in bulgaria did an awful lot of damage exactly we are unfortunately inherited that but that's that's part of the course so. it's amazing it's an amazing story that there's the animals that had two animals that had quite a traumatic start to life and it was it was pretty rubbish to be fair mm. their life before wildwood um to be able to come like it's coming back to that fact that you said at the beginning that it's like a complete reset mm. that you don't see any of those precursory health issues again just because you've allowed them to go through that natural cycle um and, and listening to the animal and what their bodies yeah. are telling you it's an amazing amazing story and yeah quite a complex science yeah. you also inherit the mental things but that's that's even more of a challenge to get rid yeah of. Um, and we still get that and we've we've made mistakes in this this whole process that we've since corrected i.e we had feeding times that were probably in the wrong places right that stimulated uh some behaviors that we didn't yep. want or we're trying to get away from so we changed that around um, it's, and the key is we're always we're always progressing we're always trying to change things to benefit the bears aren't yep. we and, and to make sure that we that we're observing them and hopefully giving them what they need and what they want yeah um, so Fluff and Scruff this year went uh, went for a torpor. Yeah. He was a bit late for one of them, weren't we? Because of his op. Yeah, he had a bit of an op. He was he was struggling to get the get the feeling, but he, he caught back up in about he's about three weeks. Okay, about three it's weeks not late, I think. Late. And then yeah, he goes. Well, you know what he's like. He looks at <laughs> you with his silly eyes, and, and <laughs> he's not there. They are. It? it does yeah. look like they're half asleep. They've yeah. just seen a complete daze. It's like they're dreaming. Um, um, so Scruff normally goes. Yeah, in front first. of a anyway, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah, and they're, they're, always, they're always sleeping together. Never known them not sleep together. They they might have distance between them <laughs> at various points, but yeah, then you end up in torpor, getting to the latter stages of torpor. You get a lot of slow motion indoor wrestling, yeah, <laughs> which is uh, a little bit more adventurous. They might come out on the occasion, but they're only going to come out on a, for a toilet break and go back in again. And it's brilliant up there because you were saying earlier that what was 
not not stopping them from going into tour, but, but that first year where you realise that going in and disturbing them by, by going in and checking and saying, oh, good morning, mm. was sort of waking them up. We've got a fantastic sort of camera system up there now, yeah. haven't we? So we can remotely check you know, where the bears are and where they're sleeping throughout their whole torpor. And you guys can see that too when you're here. We've got, uh, those yeah, of you that have been here up. before have the big screen. Um, and it is like Bear Big Brother, isn't it? Bear mm. Cam up there. And it's a brilliant tool because we can keep track of, of how they're sleeping when they are awake, but they've not gone outside. Um, so it's been invaluable really, isn't yeah. it? So I think we have had some footage of that as well. So this year, unfortunately, because of our closure, um, you haven't been here like previous years to celebrate our winter torpor coming to an end and it is, does mark a big date in the wildwood calendar because the bears sort of coming out of torpor signifies that spring is here and we're slowly getting lots of bird song and it's everything's waking up uh, and slowly the bears are waking up as well um, unfortunately you weren't here in person but we did pre-record their um, release their <laughs> big release uh, that happened on the 28th of March so um, stay tuned we're going to play that now it's about a minute long so we'll stay quiet and let you enjoy the bears going out for the first time in 2021 they're not social distancing anymore Again, super sad that you guys couldn't have been here to join us to celebrate Fluff and Scruff waking up. Um, for those of you that have been here before and followed us online, you will also know that we have a few bear cubs, two bear cubs still here, although they don't look like cubs anymore, do they? Um, they are still here, but they will be moving down to their forever home down at Escort. Paul, do you want to just give us a very brief, quick update on Mish and Lucy before um, we go to questions? Yeah, I'll give you an update of keeper um, recognition as well Le working with young animals <laughs> it was it's a different different game uh, but when you're working with the old boys you can see we've spoken about following their their cues well we saw that with the cubs also so when they came in they were I'd say I call it tight basically means they weren't the fittest <laughs> fattest animals but they weren't anywhere near the, the problems that we had with the boys yeah so the first thing we did was one one bit of food into them that was in the summer wasn't it yeah and we got them in, into more boxy looking animals more small bears as opposed to cubs as we progressed into the winter the the energy levels dropped right substantially so we went with the with the food went down because they weren't eating it We've, so we've gone through a, a mild slowing down session but not a full but not talker. a full talker it was it was yes we might be caught asleep in in the morning but as soon as any of they hear anybody it's up and about hyperactive toddlers so yeah they're still just as active yeah. as they were before so, so then there was quite a steep increase coming out of winter into the spring and they well they weren't eating sweet potato through <laughs> the winter but they would consume it as soon as you put it in front of them yeah. and they, they would eat anything that you put in front of them at the moment so they are now the diet's gone back up slightly to take in the energy levels being burnt off we're in the middle of training which is also handy because we obviously it's all food based mm -hmm. uh, training 
that's going really well. That's training to get them into a crate. So that's in preparation for their for their, for their move. move. So that when we ask them to go into a crate, they'll wander into a crate with lo lovely confidence, not be scared, and have a, a decent journey down there, being consoled by whoever's going with them all the way down there, and meeting people that they've already met when they're down there because they the keepers are coming up here. So we've got a keeper changeover so they know everybody that's doing their training make it a far easier simpler less to worry about for them stressful less stressful so the cubs should not be going down to escort until may time which brings me on to our opening so we open on the 12th of april so if you come in april you will still be able to see the cubs um, and they are, oh, they're such a barrel of fun, yeah, aren't they? Yeah. They're brilliant to watch Bonkers. up there. Um, and then, yeah, May time, they will be going to their forever home down in Escot. Um, we will be COVID safe here at the park when we open. Please check out our website at wildwoodtrust.org. We have all of our COVID prevention and precaution systems on there. That's also where you'd have to book your entrance uh, time as well. So we're gonna have to operate a booking slot, pretty much like we did last year. Um, and we will be uh, up for booking experiences as well. We do have those available, including bear experiences. Unfortunately, because the Cubs will be going very soon, it will be with Fluff and Scruff, but they're the big boys anyway. Um, they do love an experience and they need some spoiling because they've, uh, they've been asleep all winter. So they'll be really happy to see you, as will we. So I think that's my bit done, apart from the questions. So I did get handed some questions by my lovely assistant to my right. So the first one I'm going to ask, please continue to chuck questions in the comments guys, we're going to chuck them to me as quick as we can. So one from Helen, uh, we know they like honey, like Pooh Bear, do they like marmalade like Paddington? Yes. They do? <laughs> in, in, in moderate, on moderation, everything within moderation. Yeah. Use a lot of that in, especially with the youngsters, in moderation on enrichment because the, where the kids are at the moment is a limited space. We have to pile loads and loads of enrichment into that. And one of those sweet things is, is within moderation, used a lot. So um, when I say moderation, probably a teaspoonful. Yeah, so you really uh, want to keep a, a track of how yeah. much sugar they're getting. Because, because you don't want to overload them, but yeah, they love it. There we go. Jams, marmalades, Jams, honeys. marmalades. Perfect. Uh, another one from Christian. Do you feed them insects or invertebrate cakes in the summer? Cakes. I've never, I've never heard of <clears> we, cakes. <laughs> the, in uh, around about late July time, you'll see in the main enclosure for the big boys, uh, they'll be doing a lot of raking, which is the wood piles in there, they'll, they'll rake, rake them through. That indicates to me that they would eat willingly insects at that yep, time. Okay. So we then introduce a few insects into their diet. Simple reason, because insects will give them more fats and bits and pieces that we don't normally give them. If you give them an insect at the wrong time of year, they won't. They will ignore it. So it's again going by so that got to, bear behaviour, isn't you've it? You've got to follow what they do. Perfect. Um, I, as for cakes, I don't know. We could think about it. It's yeah, something we might, different. might ask for some details on what an invertebrate cake is, Christian, yeah. if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I don't know whether I know. We do, we do, the keepers do like a cake here, but I don't know whether, <laughs> whether invertebrate cakes would be cakes. quite as popular. Yes, it got chocolate coated. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Next one from Gary. Do bears like Marmite? The nation needs to know. Never, I've never <laughs> tried, but I don't see there's any reason why we shouldn't. That, that you do get these novelty things where it's nice just because just I've taken it from you, right, okay. uh, and then actually I don't fancy that. <laughs> that. That's very similar to, um, you could feed Swede first thing when they first come out, but in two weeks time they've they found something better, so you can stick your Swede there. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing. But yeah, Marmite is a yeast, isn't it? So it's probably have a novelty value, but still moderation yeah. it might be. And it, it, it's also man-made, I prefer feeding Natural, natural, natural based natural food. Stuff. So we haven't so tried it. Um, seems like bread. I wouldn't want to put yeah. bread in there because it's a man-made substance. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one from Vivian. What is the difference between hibernation and torpor? That's a good question. Uh, hibernation, you, your heart slows down, your your breathing slows down, and you can't wake up in a hurry. Uh, torpor, you can come out of it fairly easily. Uh, go and have a toilet break and then go back. Torpor is more or less a very deep sleep as opposed to hibernation is deep a switch off. Yeah, complete switch off. Okay. You, you can't you can't come out of it in a hurry. So yeah, so torpor is like a standby, mm. whereas 
hibernation so is like bromation in, yeah. in, in a reptile as yeah. well, it's the same similar thing. Perfect. Question from Sarah, when do the baby bears go to Devon? So around May time, so they're still waiting for their enclosure to, to be finished. Um, and there'll be, I'm sure there'll be updates on Facebook when we're getting ready to send them off. Uh, their story will be tracked um, when it's nearer the time. But yet, yeah, you've still got time to come see them here at Wildwood Kent. So please come down and, 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 and come visit them in April. We'll be happy to wel welcome you in. Another one from Gary. Are they aware of the new cubs or have they moved by now? The cubs are still here, but are Fluff and Scruff aware or are the cubs aware of Fluff and Scruff? Like, what's the interaction there? There is <coughs> a lot of interaction and learning from the kids because uh, we think that the boys would have seen each other would have been the first bear they saw in 15 years of life and then the next bears they saw were probably the kids so, so they would, Fluff and Scruff would have never have seen, never have seen another before, bear so there's, there was a lot of huffing and fuffing and, and, <laughs> and uh, who the hell are you <laughs> uh, until the novelty wore off and now we completely ignore each other whether the adults I would say the adults ignore the kids kids <laughs> seem to be drawn to the adults right and big brothers watch. yeah they will watch and if we're doing something for the boys the kids are always going to be behind you whether they're coming over because we're over there or yeah. because we're interacting with the, with the big boys we don't know but uh, and they yeah, are separate aren't they they're, they're, separate. Just so they're not together yeah, it's, it's not gonna you, you'd never be able to get them together well you yep. probably could but it, it would be a bit of a mission yeah i have more questions thank you very much a <laughs> uh, question from emma do bears bred in captivity develop different habits to those born in the wild that's a tough question isn't it? I, I would suggest that the kids that the, the boys that we had in originally were born in captivity um but their habits and their instincts have been given a, an avenue to to show themselves so, yeah, so okay. So since I've been here, their instincts have kicked in. So we always say your instincts will find you where your food is in the forest. So yeah, their, their instincts are, are ingrained. Uh, the problem with it is the habituation to humans yeah. on that point, isn't it? So that when you've got a hand reared animal or a captive bred animal, because it's been around humans, it has no fear, so consequently it's going to differ behave differently. Um, but the, instinctively, it theoretically should be able to look after itself because it can. It, I mean, they're smart eyes, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All out of questions now. Thank you so much uh, for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, a reminder for that opening date it's the 12th of April. Uh, get online, book your slot as soon as you can, um, and we'll be uh, waiting here with welcome open arms to say uh, welcome back uh, and happy spring. Uh, cheers, guys. Thank you very much. Bye bye.